Hi, welcome to How to Have a Happy Day in May. Today I'm going to share with you something that happened to me last night. and It was really cool and on top of the last few videos I've done, I think it's pretty significant. Yesterday was a really exciting day for Lexi and I. We went um, out doing some wedding things and made some really important decisions and I was really excited about it. And then when I got home and I got in bed last night, I started thinking about the cost of everything because I've really been focused on that too much. But, you know, you do have to keep a handle on it, pay attention to it. But I think because the wedding's coming along with all the moving and everything and the selling and the buying and all that stuff, it's um, <coughs> more so on my mind than it probably normally would be. So I was kind of thinking about it like, oh man, you know, because I'm a really frugal person and I don't believe in wasting money on things. And, and um, I think a long time about, you know, spending it and everything. So I was just thinking about all that. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'll think about that tomorrow. And I got out this little note card thingy I have. And um, I have some little notes that I stuck in here, I don't know when, on a note card, on a sticky note. And one of the things says, live above your circumstances. Then it says, relinquish the fantasy of an uncluttered world. You know, I keep waiting on all of this to end so that I can sit around and do nothing. And I just don't know if that's ever going to happen. That might be a fantasy. Do not let your to-do list become an idol. I thought that one was really good because I think that's kind of what I've been doing lately. Um, trust me in the midst of trouble. Then peace flourishes and the weeds of pride, worry, selfishness, and unbelief shrivel up. And then the last little thing I jotted down at some point in the last few years says, trust, a supernatural endeavor. And I thought, yeah, I need to really be trusting the Lord in this to, to help me know when this is the right thing to do and not and everything. And you know, you keep thinking the wedding, it's just one day, it's just one day, it's just a wedding, okay? You have to be sensible. But then, like a bolt out of the blue, something came to my mind. And it said the wedding at Cana. That is in the Bible in John chapter 2, and it is the site of Jesus' first miracle. Jesus was at a wedding before he had um, kind of introduced himself, of, of his public ministry. He was at a wedding. Some of his friends were there. I think some of his brothers were there, and his mother was there. And it was a big celebration. Weddings always are, but this was huge. Back then, when you had a wedding, uh, the groom was in charge of the, um, the costs, and they threw a party that lasted sometimes an entire week. I mean, hello. I don't need to complain. We're going to do this thing for four, four or five hours. But um, they have a wedding for like an entire week. Well, Mary comes up to Jesus and says, they've run out of wine. And they think that possibly this was a relative or very close friend of Mary and, you know, of the group. And he said, well, what does that have to do with me? And she said, she just looked at him and then she looked over at the servants and said, do what he tells you to do. Evidently, she knew that, 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 that something could be done by him. So he told us, Jesus told the servants, you know, fill the big stone jars with water and take them to the, to the master of ceremonies and give him, and dip some out. So they did that. <coughs> and the master of ceremonies turned to the bridegroom and said, most people save. The most people serve the best wine first, and then after everybody's had a little bit, you bring out the cheaper wine. And he said, but you have saved the best for last. The point of all of this for me, of, of getting this sent to me I, out of nowhere into my head, was really cool. And the point is, Jesus knows this wedding's a big deal. And he attended a wedding, you know? He obviously thought, that that was something he wanted to do. And let me read to you out of this commentary. It's really old, like from the 50s. It, start, it was first written in 1920-something, the Haley Bible Handbook. And just this little sentence here. It was kind of the backstory. Um, where is it? Okay. His subsequent miracles were wrought largely to relieve suffering, okay? Most of his miracles were when people were in trouble, they couldn't see, they couldn't, 
walk, you know, whatever. He was a healing miracles. But the first miracle he did was not a healing miracle. And it says the first miracle was done at a wedding feast on a festive occasion, occasion ministering to human joy, making people happy, as if Jesus wanted to announce right from the start that the religion which he was now introducing was not a religion of asceticism, but a religion of natural joy. It was Jesus's blessing on marriage. And that word asceticism, I had to look it up. It means um, he was not here to, to bring to us a religion of don't, you can't, you don't, you won't, blah, blah. It's more a religion of joy and happiness. And so what this all said to me was, I got this, Terry. It's going to be fine. A wedding is a big deal, and that's okay. I don't think you're wasting your money. I don't think it's a it's it's um, a sin to spend a lot of money on this. I think it's okay. It's wonderful. And then I thought about my daughter and her fiance. They are two awesome people. They've never given anybody any kind of big trouble. Like he's never given his parents any trouble. Lexi's never given us any kind of trouble. And it's sending them off for the rest of their life. And a wedding is something that you think about for the rest of your life. You think about your wedding. So it is a big deal. It's not just a party. You know, the bride books, sometimes you read them and they'll say, you know, don't forget, it's only one day. And I know that. But it just relieved me so much. It just relieved me from feeling like I'm not doing the right thing sometimes, you know. Yeah, I want the fancier silverware and the better glasses. Is that worth spending that extra money? Yeah, it is, you know. So anyway, it was just so, so cool that this came up. And um, Jesus cared. He didn't want the master of ceremony, uh, the bridegroom to be embarrassed. It's, it would be highly embarrassing to run out of something. Like you can imagine, like if we have 175 guests and 150 of them get their plates and 25 of them don't have anything to eat. Nightmare. That would be so embarrassing. Okay. That's not going to happen. Um, I, I've got a helper that I am not, I, I haven't been thinking about that enough. So this little video has been all over the map, but I hope you get the gist of it. And um, I just feel so much better. I'm just relieved about so many things over the past three days of just saying, this is fine. This is wonderful. It's going to be great. And in a couple of years, I won't even remember that we busted the budget quite so bad. Anyway, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.